Alright, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create this. Man just woke up at what? 12 p.m. Look at that bedhead. Tragic. Still in your pajamas? Impressive. Didn't you say new year, new me? Alright, so if you want to follow along with the exact same video files as me, you can do so by downloading them with link in the description below. Alright, so without further ado, let's jump into Adobe After Effects and get started. Oh, and by the way, I'm excited to announce the launch of the Next Level Editing University. I'll teach you how to create epic videos from start to finish in the most efficient way possible. If you want to create amazing videos just like me, then definitely click the link in the description below to get early access. All right, so after downloading those files, this is what you should see, and we can select all of them and drag them in Adobe After Effects. So I'm going to take my footage and I'm going to click and drag it onto a new composition by dragging it on this icon right here. And so now we can see the clip where I'm walking down the stairs, acting like I'm talking to the frames on the wall. And of course, if you want to record this yourself, it would be ideal that you actually have hanging frames on the wall. I had one frame lying around that I actually held across my wall to get the right perspective. And yeah, after doing this, unfortunately, this happened. So this is what I had to be working with. Of course, if you have actual frames, this is going to work out even better. So if you don't want to do this process where you take it in Photoshop and key it out, I already prepared a result for you, which you can find right here. That's a transparent image of the frames on the wall. And if we just drag and drop this onto our video clip, it now looks like the frames are on the wall right here. So we can close these windows here. And there we go. So as this is shot on a tripod, this looks exactly like it's supposed to be on the wall. So that's great. Of course, we can see that right here, I get in front of those frames a little bit. So we'll need to fix that. So I'm going to find a position where I start for the first time getting in front of it, like around right here. And I'm going to split my layer by going over to edit and then split layer. We can now go to the end moment where I'm no longer in front of the frame. And that's around right here. And I'm going again, edit and then split layer or control shift D. So now we can click on this layer that we just split and then control D to duplicate it. And I'm quickly going to rename it by clicking on that layer, hitting the return key and call it Roto for Rotoscope. And we're going to bring this all the way on top. The way you learn video editing is about to change forever. All through 2024, I have been pouring my heart into something truly epic. Next Level Editing University. It's designed especially for creators just like you. And I can honestly say that I have never worked so hard on any project ever before. If you want to stay updated and unlock early access, click the link in the description below to find out more. Let's create something truly epic and amazing together. Now go to the beginning of this clip by holding shift and going to the beginning and we're going to pick our roto brush tool. So click on that and now double click on this layer to open it up in a layer tab. So if we drag this out with the roto brush selected, you will see that you have a brush just like this. You can change your brush settings by going over to brush and if it's grayed out, simply click on the brush here, play around a little bit with the diameter and then go back to the brush of the roto brush and now you can adjust the size right here. So this works well for me and I'm going to click and drag around me to get a perfect roto of my entire body. So something like this should work and now we can fill in the gaps here and boom, we have a good looking result. A little bit more on the hand, even though this isn't going to matter, only this part is going to be in front of the frame. Now we only have one problem and that's my messy hair. So we'll need to fix that. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to actually use a different method here. So go over to the roto brush tool and we also have the option to do a refine edge tool. So click on that and now we can drag around the edge of my hair and just make sure that all the hair here is included just like so. And that's actually going to take a contrast image of my hair 
and make sure that this is keyed out perfectly. If we release, we can now see that we now created some kind of alpha mat of our hair. So once that's done, we can go back over here and click on fit so we can see the entire thing. Go back to your roto brush tool and make sure that everything is filled in perfectly. So over here, I can see that my shirt is not included entirely as it thinks it's part of the wall. So once that is done, we can press the space bar on the keyboard to let it play true. And you're just going to verify each frame if it's doing what it's supposed to. And normally it should. So everything seems fine and probably it will be for the rest of the scene. So once you're done checking all the frames, click the button, freeze the frame right here. And that will freeze the rotoscope that we just created. All right, so once that's done, it will be easier to render this out. So we can close this layer tab now. And now you will see that we're in front of the painting if we bring the roto layer on top of the frames layer. If you do see some imperfections here on the edges, you can always try to go over to the effects and presets and search for matte choker and apply the matte choker effect to this layer and that will get rid of that right here. You can also disable this and play around with the feather here. So maybe go for like 15 and play with the shift edge to minus 15. And like that, you will see that you can shrink this mat a little bit. You can also increase the contrast levels to get better results. You can also try to decontaminate the edge colors if you enable this. And there we go. So now we got rid of that. So this is looking great. The only thing that we now need to do is, of course, fill in these canvases. So for all these images, I used Polo AI from the beginning till the end. I started off with a text to image generator for the old man. So I wrote something like a painting of an old wise man, a painting of a classy royal lady or a painting of a dark figure. And in my case, I already had a photo of me. So I also used that one. And then I just imported them in Polo.ai in their video generation. So whatever you write, it's going to get you exceptional results. The cool thing about Polo AI is that it combines all the best AI models out there and brings it together in one place. You might already know that Runway AI or Kling Video is the best out there. And in Polo AI, you can find those. So you can select your preferred model to work with and go from there. For example, this really cool anime model. There is a paid model, but free users also get something. You can create up to two video generations if you are a free user. And if you check in daily, you also get points and credits for that. So I would highly encourage you to check it out for yourself with link in the description below. All right, so now let's get back to the video. So after we've generated those video files, we can right click new and create a new solid. And we're going to call this mask and then click OK. And we're going to disable this layer. Now we need to zoom in on each of these frames and we're going over to the pen tool, click on that and zoom in closely and make a perfect mask of our frame. So make sure we have like nice rounded corners here. You can do this as perfect as you want. It's going to be completely up to you. And there we go. So now we can fit it up and enable this layer again. We can also press F on the keyboard and click on the mask feather, hold control and click on all of these and then right or just click in the zero pixels and write something like three. So we have a little bit of a softer edge on the borders here. Uh, you can also lower this play around with the feather to your likings. So now we have this masked out and we can place a video in each one of these. So I'm going over to my project manager and I'm going to take all of these video files that we generated through Polo AI. So I'm going to start with the old man first. I'm going to place that into my scene. I'm going to bring this over to the moment where I supposedly talk to him. I'm also going to change my resolution here to quarter for now so I can preview this quicker. So right here I get down and immediately he will start talking. So I'm going to place him over here. And then we can toggle the switches and turn this into a 3D layer by clicking right here. Now we can take our selection tool and rotate our painting to our scene. And if you feel like the perspective is off, we can also create a new camera. 
and we can choose a preset such as 20 millimeters, for example, and click OK. And now you'll see that the perspective matches a little bit better. Click again on your video. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we're trying to match it as close as possible. Next, we can click on a corner, hold shift and scale our image down. Place it as good as you can into its position or its final position here, something like this. Now we can take our next video, which is going to be the lady here. We're going to bring this right after the old man and maybe even overlap these video files. Take over here and click on the 3D layer. Now also rotate this into place. Next is going to be the dark figure. Bring it in here. And then last but not least, it's myself. I'm going to bring that in here. And actually a really cool result because I took this from a photo of mine and it actually moves in the video just like it's me. It's really crazy. Something like this. So now we can toggle the switches again. And for each layer, we also have the track matte option. For the track matte, we're going to select all of these with shift and then we can use the pick whip tool here and drag that to this mask. So now each photo will be in the frame perfectly masked out. The only problem here is now that they jump around a little bit. So we're going to right click on one of these video files and go over to enable time remapping under time, enable time remapping. And now all we have to do is just extend these layers for the entire duration of the video. Do that for each one. So now if we play through this, you can see that we now have our videos and they go one by one. I did see a little mistake here and I suppose I also had to rotoscope on this part, but I'm going to leave that up to you, just extend it a little bit longer. And so what I like to do is just make them a little bit slower here and I'm going to also play around with the timing of each one. So it actually fits the conversation and the look that I'm giving on the frame. Also for me here, I'm actually looking at myself and then right here I turn my head. I actually want to flip this around. So I'm going to take this last keyframe, bring it in the beginning and bring this one at the end. And so now I get this kind of disappointing look towards me. I'm also going to select all of my keyframes, right click, keyframe assistance and easy ease them. So they come to a slow stop and they start slowly. And that's going to ease in the animation a lot better in Adobe After Effects. I also noticed a little mistake in my image here that the camera is moving. So to fix that, we can click on this layer and go for layer pre-compose and leave all the attributes in this composition. Click OK and then press U again to reveal those keyframes. Now we can double click on this layer and that will open up this composition. We're going to the beginning here, hold shift and snap it to the end and then press N on the keyboard, right click and trim comp to work area. So now we have the exact duration of my clip. I'm also going over to the tracker. I'm going to click on my layer and click on warp stabilize. And this time I'm going to choose a result to be no motion. Let it analyze in the background and that should solve the motion in the background. Go back to your footage and you might see a mistake here at the beginning that there is no frame. If you have this problem, just go to the frame where you still see me, go one frame further with page down and create a new keyframe, zoom in and take this keyframe and just stretch it all the way till the beginning of your clip. I'm also going to hold control and click on this keyframe and hold control and click on this keyframe and that might solve the problem that we had or and just select both of these again right click and go for keyframe assistance easy ease sometimes you just have to redo the easy ease in order for this to work okay so once you have everything in place your timing done and everything we can now go over to make these pictures feel a little bit more integrated in the scene. I do like how the old man already looks here. I'm going over to my effects and presets and search for the curves. I'm going to apply that to this layer. I'm going to look here at the white of my shirt and I think it's a little bit too bright on him. So I'm going to lower the highlights 
I'm also going to bring up the shadows a little bit. Not too much, but like this, it looks more like an integrated picture in my scene. And now I'm going through every layer and do the same thing for each picture. We can also apply a tint effect and lower this value to make it a little bit more desaturated and integrate it a little bit more. Once you're satisfied with the look and feel of those, we're good to go. Once you're done with everything, we can go over to the moment where I step off the stairs right here, clicking on the first one, holding shift and selecting the last one and go over to layer, pre-compose and we are going to call this edit. Click OK and then right click, go to composition settings and we're going to make sure that we have 24 FPS here. Click OK. And then we're going to split this layer right here by going over to edit, split layer, and then right click on our clip here and go to time, time stretch and set it to 50. This is going to speed it up by 200%. And now we have real time playing after we hit the floor. So here we have some dramatic music in the background, boom, reality checks, maybe a DJ scratch, and then we have the conversation with our figures. For the conversation, you can also use an AI voice generator. In my case, I use the voice generator from Artlist and I also use their music in the background. And at the end, I'm going to press N on the keyboard, right click and trim comp to work area. I'm also going to right click new and create a new adjustment layer and call this shake. And you can find our shake preset with a link in the description below. This is Filmbro Quick Shake. And if we apply this to the adjustment layer, we can click away and click on the stopwatch for the slider. So we don't have any keyframes in our animation. We're going to click on the speed and we're going to set this to comma five. And for the strength, maybe something like 10 or even 20. And if we're going to play this, we're going to have some subtle camera motion to our scene and it's going to look more like a handheld shot. Man just woke up at what? 12 p.m. Look at that bedhead. Tragic. Still in your pajamas? Impressive. Didn't you say new year, new me? All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a like. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. Apart from that, I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, create epic videos.